I don't think Reyna is playing Protoss. If he plays Protoss, he has to play Protoss in all three games, and I don't think he will uh, do that. I think Reyna plays Zerg. Expect ZVZ here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim, Tim. Battle of the Basilisk, boys. Sarah versus Rainer. You're not sleepy. I want to make myself a quick coffee, guys. I need to stand up one more time to pick it up. I would have preferred tea. But I don't know how to make tea. <laughs> no, I do not have to make tea. I just don't have time for it. Coffee is quicker. Jack Frost versus the Finnish Phenom. This is gonna be hype. I'm excited, guys. Rainer has been working hard. He's been playing a lot. We haven't seen too much of Yona yet in 2024. He played one official match and he lost that one, 2 Yeah, I will lower the music, no worries. Sorry, I'm not wearing my earbuds right now. I will figure it out. Bottom left side of Hecate, we are looking at the main base of the great Iona Sotala, his second official match of the year at Serral. Top right side, we are looking at the main base of the Italian Stallion, who's streaming three times a day. It's Rainer. Now... Mm -mm -mm. I am back, and I will figure out the... Uh... Like, I mixed the audio on my uh, Go XLR. So I try to find a nice balance between my voice and the game sounds. Hmm. No. If Rainer plays Zerg in game one, he needs to play Zerg in all three games. He said it earlier in the chat. He said, they are nerfing me, Kev. I'm not allowed to play Protoss on the route he said. So it will be ZVZ all the way. Yeah, we started the tournament off with a uh, DKZ versus DKZ match. And then the third match of the tourney is Basilisk versus Basilisk. I think they are using our old logo, by the way. But it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Oh yeah, our prediction is going to be open for way too long. So slowly, I believe, has not predicted. So slowly, can you do me a favor? Can you close the prediction the moment we are four minutes into the game? Four minutes into the game. If Reyna would like to play, let's say, his second series of this tournament, all with Protoss, he is allowed to do that, yes. But he's not allowed to switch in the middle of the series. Let's say Reyna wins today, he's 1-0, and he plays against Dark in the next round, because Dark is 1-0 as well. If he wants to play Protoss in all three games against Dark, he could do that. So anybody who wants to play our channel point prediction game, it is going to be close two minutes from now. Keep that in mind. Raynor has a Zergling speed on the way. Cero does... No, the other way around, sorry. Cero has Zergling speed on the way. Raynor does not yet have Zergling speed on the way. These games are a bit of a nightmare to commentate because the red player is spawning on the top side of the map but is on the bottom side of the scoreboard, so also the bottom side of the production tab. I would always flip this, but they don't do this in WTL. So especially in mirror matchups, this can be very confusing to keep uh, track of. Reyna does have Zergling speed on the way now too, but Cero's already going up to three bases. Reyna is the first one to drop an evolution chamber. I wonder if Reyna is going to surprise Cero with a lot of links, but if he wants to do that, he needs to do that basically right now because he's already going up to 30 plus drones. Not totally certain what Rainer is cooking here. These two, of course, know each other incredibly well. If you're wondering, Roddy, because their teammates do they practice a lot with each other. I, I think it, it depends a little bit what time of the year we're in. I think there are some moments where they will gladly play some custom games with each other. But even though they are teammates, they're obviously both going to IM Katowice with the idea to win it all. And they look at each other as like, hey, you're one of my main competitors, you're my main rival. So the closer you get to a big tournament like Game is 8, the closer you get to a big tournament like Katowice, these two will not be playing that much with each other. Because obviously they're going to prepare for each other. 
A whole bunch of links will get on top of the third base of Rainer, and that is good enough for Serral to draw first blood here, as he's gonna get a cancel. Also fires up way more links, drops the... well, the Roach one is already dropped. Fires up a couple of Roaches too. So it's starting to look like Serral wants to go for maybe something that Solar has done a lot against him in the past. Like a, a low 30-ish drone count, and then a big attack of hatchery attack. Overall, I, I'm a bit worried here for Rainer. The Banelings have potential. But he needs his own roaches. Rainer needs to get his own roaches. He fires up plus one missile attacks. But what Rainer really needs is roaches himself. Is that roach warrant too late, guys, on the side of Rainer? Or is this okay? Can he buy enough time with the Lings and Drones? Or the Lings and Banelings? Both players are actually droning up now. Well, Saro maybe just felt that he needed all these roaches defensively. Then I guess it's still completely fine. They have expanded in a different way, where Rainer has taken the triangle base and Saro has just expanded in a horizontal manner. And has created a little bit of a worker advantage for himself. It's not that bad. He's now going to queue up his own roaches. Obviously, he does need to build them eventually. Because he knows that there is a chance that Saro is still building units. And he's going to grab everything he has and send it to the other side of the map. High level ZVZ is always on a uh, razor thin edge. Wait, you need to figure out what is the right moment to build drones, what is the right moment to build units. And a ZVZ can be amazing. People ask me uh, about my favorite game of the year 2023, and I find it very hard to answer that. But now that I see Saro and Rainer again. I actually think that the ZVZ that these two had on Grass 1 at Home Story Cup 23, I think that is my favorite game of the year. So if you guys are bored after this broadcast and you want to watch more Zerk, and you haven't seen Home Story Cup 23, I think Rainer vs. Serral on Grass 1 Home Story Cup 23, I think is my favorite game of the entirety of 2023. It was an absolutely amazing game. A couple of links are going to get us around on two of the roaches, but the Bane links got sniped. Sero is doing his best liquid plum impression. As the moment that Lair is done, Sero drops the spire. Ça va étoile, le tot. Home Story Cup Summer Year. So not the most recent one, but the one that Rainer ended up winning. When he beat Solar in the Grand Finals. You can probably watch it on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure that some YouTubers have covered the game. But you can also obviously... I hope that uh, Take TV uploads those VODs, but then I'm not 100% certain of. <laughs> Fantastic game. To me, the best game of 2023. I was blown away. They were both playing incredibly good, incredibly quick. It was impossible to say who was going to win. It felt like it was one of these games that could have ended at any given moment, and it never did. It was, it was just awesome. Well, Rainer does not know yet about that Spire. Zero has been vocal in the past about how he's not a fan of the Muta in this matchup. Mostly because he hates playing against it. He obviously never said that he hates playing with it. Spire down, first Muta's on the way, it's gonna be annoying for Rainer. And it's going to be very annoying for Rainer. Now if it's only like 6 or so Mutalists, there's obviously a chance that Rainer just absolutely sends it with a monstrous ground army. It keeps the Mudas at home, forces Serral to use those Mudalists defensively. I think it's gonna be hard, man. Serral is gonna use the Mudalists at first to just work on these uh, Overlords that are trying to give Rainer some map vision. Rainer immediately drops a couple of Spore Crawlers and the Hydra then. Thank you to Big Taga for the 16 months, I appreciate it, mate. Yeah, you're talking about Atlanta, uh, Disrael on uh, El Sayuni. That was a very good game too. I agree with you. I just love the pacing of the Rainer against Serral game of uh, Grass 1 more. Rainer is going to go ahead and try to make something happen with that monstrous ground army. You have a couple of Mudas chipping away at all of these roaches from the sky. Rainer does have slightly better upgrades, so his roaches can survive a little bit longer. But in the end, Serral has more than enough. Defensive units to survive. Is a rebuilding 17 roaches. Rainer is now building a lot of Hydras. 
problem with Hydras, guys, is that Hydras kind of suck in the Roach Ravager battles. Raynor is also running around with Lynx. Trying to flex his speed. But Saro not giving him too many openings yet. Even Day9 nice said that game was great? It was great, mate. <laughs> I, I would be shocked if Day9 nice said, like, yeah, I saw it and I didn't like it. <laughs> I think everybody liked that game. But, you know. When it comes to your favorite game of the year, that's just an opinion, right? Everybody's gonna have their own opinion. Sarah has a bunch of units getting on top of the fourth base of Raynor. I would love to take a little look at that. Okay, Raynor's got defensive units in location. And that should be more than enough to take care of it. Raynor's doing a very good job in spending his money. Sarah was struggling a tiny bit with it, but... Fires up 13 more roaches, drops the infestation pit, and he's maxed out. These five mutas are being annoying, but it's not a whole lot more than that. It's not devastating amounts of damage. Reyna also didn't like overreact in a crazy way, right? Where he's like, oh, I need to build like five spores per base. Two to five spore crawlers per base. It's one spore per base. It's fired up a couple of hydras. He's gonna try to make magic happen over here at the bottom, but the ravages are really what is the most MVP unit here. The corrosive power is so good. It's not just about that ability connecting. But it's about forcing your opponent to micro against it. And every single time the Roaches and the Ravages and Hydras of Reyna pull back. Obviously they are not firing and they are being fired at. So it's incredibly difficult to end a game like this. Sero has always been the god of Roaches with Tunneling Claws and Burrow. And this is really shaping up to be an excellent game between these two. Everything that we were hoping for. We know that ZVZ can end early. And... There was a little bit of poking and prodding, as Loco would say, but nobody pulled the trigger completely. And that means that now we're both maxed out. It will be very interesting to see uh, how Saro looks in the later stages of this ZVZ. As obviously it's been a little while since we saw Yona play a lot. I would say the ESL Winter Championships in Atlanta was the last real time we got to see Yona. We saw him play two games against Clem. In the WTL Codas finals, but yeah, I prefer to forget about those. <laughs> Thought is trying to be tasteless in the chat. Rainer has sent off a couple of roaches to the bottom right side, and he thinks there's an opening here. I would be surprised if there is, but hey, those Hydra are taking a very good fight against the Mutalists, so most of the Mutalists have taken care of. One of the Carosa Balls is connecting. Saro's obviously going to try to get into Lurkus too, but that means that at this point he's also forced to fight with some Hydras. I still think the Superior Concave should help out in his favor. Obviously he has units coming in from the top left as well. So he's even taken that base at 9 o'clock. It is good enough to push Raynor back. Raynor's sitting on a lot of resources at this point, but he's just going to spend that on Lurkus and Viper still. So we're going to get properly spoiled over here, guys. A Lurker-Viper battle. Between, in my opinion, the two very best Lurker Viper players in the business. And whenever I say that, there is always someone who's like, But what about Dark, Ruddy? Yeah, Dark is very good. Too. And if you guys think that Dark is better, you can have your opinion. In my eyes, these are the two best high tech ZVZ players on the planet. And I am very curious to see how this one will play out. Saro is still trying to make some magic happen here, right before we truly enter the Lurker Viper phase. And this is actually not a bad fight for Saro so far. Rainer's gonna have to send a few more units over at the same time. Roaches and Ravagers get on top of the fifth base of Rainer. I highly doubt that Rainer has cancelled that. I hope that he did, but maybe the Observer can show us. A couple of spines finishing up, not quite in time. Rainer's having a, a bit of a hard time figuring out where he needs his units the most at the moment. But since he's still rich and he's a four base Zergi, I do think we are gonna see those Lurkers and Vipers. <laughs> what about three point? <laughs> Hello, Mixer. I think this game would be hell for three point, mate. Few roaches have burrowed in the top side, and I'm gonna try to make a, another run by, but this is where the overseers and spore crawlers should come in handy. It's annoying. Roaches on creep are very quick. Nice block, by the way, by the queen. Look at that queen, by the way, but <laughs> Yona picks up and it is going to burrow and get underneath that queen. He's gonna try to make some magic happen here, trying to keep Rainer on four bases, but I don't think that's the play. 
Thought was in the chat saying it could be a long game, it could be a short game. I'm feeling a long game between these two. Superior concave here on the high ground for Rain and his roaches. Does not have any ravages, does not have a, a lurker here yet, but I think when you have such a beautiful concave on top of a ramp, you're going to be fine. Even if your army is a little less diverse. This is also where a game where I'm always sad that I'm not actually in the game myself, because I would love to take a look at the units lost resource tab now, and then take another look at it a couple minutes from now. This is one of these games where I do believe more Vipers are better. Zerg is the only race that doesn't really have something that's excellent against a bunch of Vipers, right? They don't have EMP, they don't have feedback. So, what do you do, what do, you do against Vipers? Most of the time, you get your own Vipers. <laughs> So then you just get more and more and more Vipers. Like, you don't want to show up with three or four Vipers, no. I think we're going to see like eight, nine, ten Vipers from both players. And I know it sounds crazy, but I absolutely believe that that is the right play. And we can see it in the bottom right, yeah. So at this point, Raynor has lost around 2,000 resources more than Cero. 2,000 resources more. Keep that in mind. Uh, I think Yona has looked very good in this game so far, but I think it's far from over. It really comes down to the Viper fight. Sarah actually thinks that this is maybe a moment to go for it. We'll have to take a look at the Lurker counts as well. And then he's going to get two additional Lurkers. I don't see too many Lurkers yet. I believe the right play here is to get slowly but steady rid of a couple of your Roaches. Trade out some of that Roach supply. Ideally get something in return for it. And then a rebuild. With more Hydras, more Vipers, more Lurkers. Like if I'm Rainer here, I keep on uh, chasing. Until you realize that you're absolutely running it into a meat grinder. Awesome start to the opening best of three for both of these nerds in the Masters Coliseum. It is very early in the Swiss format, so there's no need to panic about the, the loser of this series. They will have plenty of chances to redeem themselves and still make it into the playoffs. It is the opening day, but it's still fun. And obviously everybody wants to get off to a good start when it's a massive online tourney. A couple of Vipers will abduct each other. Who gets the kills? Feels that Sarah got slightly superior traits there, guys. Sarah was able to land a few more abducts than Raynor did. So first blood absolutely gets drawn by Sarah there. I think he lost one, killed three or four. A great trade by the Finnish Phenom. Broodlords don't do anything, uh, QU. Solar tried to kill Sarah once at a stay at home story cup with Broodlords. And it was one of the most insane victories that Sarah has ever had. I'll never forget that uh, game as Double Up Duck is going to land. This time around, slightly better for Raynor. I think he lost one kill too. They should really show us the unit uh, tap, by the way. I want to see what they are working with. It's incredibly interesting to look at. It does feel that Raynor is still a bit more roach heavy than Cero is. And that's obviously not the place that Raynor wants to be. But you also don't want to throw away 20 roaches at once and then die immediately because you don't have enough units. Someone indeed in this tournament is going to get very unlucky. Could be Solar, could be Oliveira. But anybody that is 0-1 will play against another player that is 0-1. So yeah, you could start off the tournament down a series and then playing Cero or Raynor in your second round. That's obviously a rough couple of great abducts here by Cero. Raynor is thinking of a surround on that army. I would have kind of liked to see him go for it, but he decided against it at the absolute last second. Who's trapping who? Who's surrounding who? Cero seems to be very well aware of it. I think the Changelings gave him a heads up. Abduct galore over here guys. It's very hard to tell you guys what exactly is going on. We landed a couple of blinding clouds as well. Seems like another minor victory for Serol, but he had way more units here. I believe that the drawings were completely random. There is no seeding and there will also not be any seeding into who plays who in the next round. So whether you win or lose, no seeding at all. Raynor is gonna try to get across that bridge, but six or seven lurkers means that this is a bridge too far. Great movie, by the way, guys. If you like Second World War movies, I highly recommend it. 
a movie about Operation Market Garden. Where they tried to free the Netherlands, baby. It's one of my favorites. Both players are maxed out and they have similar banks, so you would say that this is a dead even game. And I would say that it's pretty even, but it still feels a little bit Serral favorite to me. I think overall Serral has a slightly better comp than Raynor has at the moment. And Serral has obviously been able to get the best of Raynor in a couple of these uh, Lurker, uh, Lurker Viper fights. One thing that is very noteworthy is that the European server is having some issues at the moment. And you cannot host certain maps on Europe. Why is that, Roddy? Nobody knows. It's just a bug on Battle.net. It's very frustrating. And that actually means that these two right now are playing against each other on the American server. So they both have a bit of ping to work with. Uh, I do believe that Saros ping is going to be a tiny bit better than Rainer's ping as we once more land a whole bunch of ducks. The blinding clouds, by the way, by Rainer were fantastic. And I would say that that was the first real victory that Rainer got in the Lurker Viper battles. That just felt a bit better for Rainer. These fights are messy, they are chaotic, and they're very hard to call, especially because they are both incredibly good at what they do. And they both make all the correct calls as well, so it's... It's not like where one late game uh, ZVZ player is way better than the other one, and you're like, oh, here we go again, he's going to abduct, and the lurkers will obliterate everything. No, both of these guys are very good at this. And that just makes these fights very chaotic and very messy. You don't even play Starcraft, but I wish SC2 was as popular still as it used to be. It's a fair take, mate, but there are still a lot of people who love Starcraft. There's still a lot of people who enjoy Starcraft. And if you enjoy it, mate, I wouldn't think too much about the old days. Just still enjoy the action that there currently is. You will be able to share your passion with tens and thousands of other Starcraft 2 fans. As we're going to have a lot of chaos happen over here. The blinding clouds are pretty good. And I think that Raynor can't really stick around here as Raynor has sent most of his units into the main. Raynor cannot fight that army. Giving up on that base is hard because if he gives up on the triangle, he's basically giving up on that base at 3 o'clock as well. And losing two bases for very little is not what Raynor is aiming for. As the Lurkers have just obliterated basically everything in the main. That was a massive victory for Serro, guys. Serro got a good fight in the main with his Lurkers. And great YOLO run by. I mean, Raynor was rich, so he is able to rebuild 40 plus Hydra, like 43 or whatever it was. But that's not something that you can do multiple times. <laughs> you can rebuild 43 Hydras once, but you're not going to do that two or three times. They are a little too expensive for that. Sarah is starting to find more and more openings, and has obviously just done a good job in keeping Raynor at bay. Raynor has maybe felt that ever since Demiras came out, he's been a tiny bit behind and it's all been about surviving and hanging in there. He is doing that, but it does feel that this is Serral's map at the moment. But one of the most memorable games that these two have had. And maybe one or two of you passion and nerds out there will remember it, but there was a map called Thunderbird once. Raynor remembers it very well, because we were all in Kiev, Ukraine. And this was a tournament that Raynor actually won. Raynor defeated Saro in the grand final. They had an amazing game that was somewhat similar to this one. Where Saro was kind of outplaying Raynor. Raynor will be the first one to tell you that Saro was outplaying him. But because Saro was outplaying Raynor so hard. At one point Raynor was down to like 12 drones. And he had 188 army supply. He had no more money. Saro had all the money in the world. And Raynor said alright fuck it. I can't win this game anymore. So he grabbed everything he had. He ran to the other side of the map and he burrowed lurkers across like six bases at once and spammed blinding clouds everywhere. And even though Serro had a big bank and a big army, he could just not clean it up. And the 180 plus supply of Raynor managed to win a game that really felt like a lost cause. And it actually let Raynor win the tournament in the end. I'll never forget that game and I know Raynor will never forget it either because he was also laughing and he could not believe that he was still able to win it. Lurkers and Hydra is applying some pressure to this base at 3 o'clock as Raynor is wondering if there's something he can get done. I told you guys a little while ago that more Vipers are better. I think it's safe to say that these nerds are agreeing, right? What is that? 9, 10 Vipers? <laughs> a crazy amount of Vipers.
Raynor is down to 31 drones at the moment, which means 169 army supply. I'm sure that Yona didn't forget about that Thunderbird game either. Who's maybe Raynor can land some abducts here, guys? I saw that army. He's not able to do it yet. Raynor's army is quite a bit bigger. Cero has the better economy. Well, because Cero is so good at dealing damage to the economy. Reyna was able to mine for quite some time, and it does allow Reyna to have a bigger force. Lens and Abduct there. Here we go, guys. Ready for some Abducts, ready for some Blinding Clouds. One Viper goes down. Small victory for Reyna. But he needs more than small victories, and he knows that. Lens a few more Abducts on the Lurkers this time around, and it's Cero who's abducting Overseers. I think that's a mistake. Did Raynor just abduct a drone that was carrying gas in the middle of all of that? <laughs> all of a sudden I had the feeling that there was a drone there that had some gas in his hands, but... That went better for Raynor than it went for uh, Sarah. <laughs> the spines and spores are very useful, especially with like a little lurker in the mix there too. Von Roos says, but Raynor cannot afford to keep on trading slowly. That is true. But he is maxed out and he has a bit of money, right? So it's not that it's now or never for Raynor. It's either, ooh, Jesus, seven drones clump up on mineral patches and those two get obliterated. I mean, you gotta give it to Yona. I think 26 minutes in, Cero has played the better game. But StarCraft 2 is brutal and it doesn't care about your feelings and it doesn't care about who has played better. Raynor can absolutely still win this. Because of the fact that he has lost so many drones and he's going to get a big old army. And it could very well turn into Thunderbird 2.0 many years later. I don't know when that game was played, but 2018 or something like that. Cero has played better. Cero is winning, but will he win? That is the big question after 27 minutes. And a lot of little changes between, in my opinion, still the two best Zerg players on this planet. It would not be the worst play ever indeed for Cero to now basically do something that Terran play is doing. Get rid of a couple of your workers. Cero might have a better engagement here. Yes, he does land two of the Abducts immediately. Lands a few more Abducts. This is the fight that I think Cero was looking for. As we, no, why would the stream lag now? Are you kidding me? WTL, don't do that to me. Massive Pharaoh bomb went down. All right, the game will continue. I'm sorry about that, guys. Cero had a better engagement there. A lot of the Vipers are so low in HP. Reino actually still has a whole bunch of Vipers. But that was not the kind of fight that Cero needs. Cero needs, uh, or excuse me, that Reino needs. Reino needed a big victory. Something that we can clearly say was a victory for him. That wasn't quite it. Cero's now all of a sudden losing 26 rounds. So that went real quick too. Can we land another Parabomb? No, it's going to be Abduct Galore instead. So Reino ends up losing a few more Vipers. And I think with 25 drones, no bank, losing that many Vipers... I don't know if this is doable anymore for Raynor. As we land a few more of Ducks on Cero's side this time around, Raynor is losing units that he simply cannot replace. Cero was the one who kind of ambushed Raynor there from the side. Cero was the one who was able to do the spell casting first. And I think that means that this is gonna go Cero's way. Raynor is splitting up a couple of roaches and hydras in the top left side, gets on top of that one lurker, takes out the spines and whatnot. Both players are very low actually on uh, gas at the moment. Saro is down to 10 gas and has zero gas income. So that's actually a bit annoying. He now needs to build Zerglings. <laughs> but Saro still has so many Vipers. And Raynor does not have the bank, the economy, to rebuild all the Vipers he lost. Links may seem silly, but it's obviously still better to have Links than have nothing. Uh, it's just that... Cero got the engagement there on Raynor. It's all about who sees who first. A battle of vision, a battle of positioning. And Cero came in from the left and he was able to land a couple of abducts, a couple of blinding clouds. And Raynor had to react. But by the time you have to react, you're already dead. After 29 minutes, I think this is going to go Cero's way. I think Raynor also knows it, that he's running on his last legs. It's a great high-level ZVZ between these two. It was action-packed. Had a couple of slow moments as well. But Cero is showing us that the year may be 2024, but he still got it. The Finnish Phenom wins his first official match of this year. Now only has a 33% win record though in 2024. Is he washed, guys? Is Cero's era over? Has played three games, only one month. 
He looked very good. I do think that Sarah looked very good. We know that Rainer is incredibly quick. We know that Rainer enjoys playing uh, Archon mode where he's truly trying to push his own ability to be quick and his speed to the next level. But Sarah looked as quick and clever as ever there. Do I know if Sarah and Rainer have a favorite matchup in races? I actually uh, don't really know. I think that also changes per patch and per map pool. I think right now Rainer probably... I actually have no idea what he enjoys playing the most. Because he complains about both. <laughs> he complains about Protoss and he complains about Terran. Sero will probably tell you that he'd rather play... I think Sero will tell you that he's more confident against Protoss. But that he enjoys playing against Terran more. Because I think Sero still loves late game PvZ. But it's obviously not fun to make every game a 40 minute game. And I think he struggles killing Protoss early on. But I think he also... He, I think he fears Terran more, but he enjoys playing against Terran more. Great performance, though, by Yona. Played very well. You feel both of them are old men, but they still look so young. I mean, Rainer is 21. I don't know if 21 is that old. But sure, he's older than Cuckoo. And Sebedes, but... And Fjant. Well, I don't know if 21 makes you old. It also really changes with time, right? When we were kids, like when I was 14, I did used to think of people that were 21 as they are old and grown up. But then when I was 21, I thought of people that were 30, that they were old and grown up. Now I'm 36 and I think of the people that are 50. They are old. <laughs> so it just changes with time. <laughs> You know, when I was a kid and you would have told me that somebody is uh, playing video games, and I was like, well, but he's 36. Isn't that like super old? <laughs> Maybe the times have changed a little bit as well, but I really don't feel that old. I actually had a funny interaction yesterday at the Padel Court when I played with a lady called Ellie. I don't know how old Ellie is, but I'm going to say that she's at least in her 60s. So in Dutch, there are different ways to address somebody, right? You can say jij or je. Or you can say U, and U is like a bit more polite, and it's in general what young kids say to older people. At least that's how I got raised, and I think a lot of Dutch people in this chat got raised like that as well. If you talk to the elderly, you use U, not Ja or Je, because that's a bit disrespectful. So I always say U to Ellie, and then she was like, are you Belgium or something? Because I thought only people from Belgium say that. Uh, you make me feel old. And I'm thinking like, yeah, but you are kind of old. But uh, maybe in her mind... I'm also old, so I shouldn't address her as U. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm still a kid. <laughs> so I need to be polite. And I was like, if I don't say U, my mommy gets angry. And they started laughing. She's like, no, just say Ellie or Yai. Please, no U. <laughs> I was like, ah. But it did make me think a little. I was like, yeah, maybe I have the age where I shouldn't say U anymore to older people. But I was like, I don't know, man. I've always felt like I was the young kid and I need to be polite. Anyway, round two. Awesome first game. Round two. Fight. We have a Swiss format. If you win three best of threes, you make it into the playoffs of the Master Coliseum 7. If you lose three best of threes, you are eliminated. For both players, this is their opening best of three. So... Nobody makes playoffs here, nobody gets eliminated, but obviously getting off to a good start is important. Rainer is the Italian stallion in the bottom right side. Sarro is the Finnish Phenom in the top left. Sarro has taken the 1-0 lead after a masterclass of ZVZ. He's showing us that the year may be 2024, but no one still does it better than the great Jonas Satala. Perhaps that's what it is, Kura. I've just been widow mind dropped a few too many times, man. You know what has also happened, by the way, guys? Twice. I'm not making this up. But this is the second time in two weeks that I play Padel with strangers. And, like, we settle it in WhatsApp and then we reserve the court and I show up. And the man that I played with yesterday, and you guys thought his name was very funny because it's D-I-K. His name is Dick. Uh, the first thing he says to me is like, oh, uh, hi, Kevin. Nice to meet you. Well, uh, your uh, Padel picture is from a little while ago. Eh? <laughs> That's at least a couple of years ago by the looks of it. 
That picture was taken four months ago. And he is the second dude to tell me in two weeks that I apparently look so much older and worse in real life than I do in that picture. This has been, this has been taken four months ago. Like, these guys are savage. And I was like, no, that's not the case at all. <laughs> it's like, I took a selfie when I installed the app. And I don't know how long I've been playing. Like, barely half a year. Actually, first I had a different picture. It's like legit taken in August or something. And they're making it seem that I'm catfishing them. Maybe they think that a young, handsome dude shows up. And they're like, who the hell is this fat old man? It's like, well, that's me. But that picture is recent. <laughs> yeah, they think that I'm catfishing in Padel. But I do think I play pretty good. So I make up for it. <laughs> anyway. That's funny little things. Circling speed is on the way for both of the nerds here. Serral vs. Rainer, 1-0 lead for Serral. Heartlet is obviously a map that's going to play out a bit different than Hecate. There is a base in the center of the map. Both players expanding in the same way. Last game, Rainer delayed the third base for a bit and he went for the triangle. This time he just goes normal, all three bases in a horizontal way. Serral does the exact same thing. We could get a nice little Ling Bane skirmish over here. I like the text, two Starcrafts. Yeah, well, there's many different ways to write Starcraft, mate. You can do SC2, you can do SC, you can do Starcraft 2, you can do the regular 2, you can do Wings of Liberty, Legacy of the Void. I just tag some, I just wrote some stuff down. Don't focus on that too much, mate. Padel is kind of like tennis. It's a mix between tennis and racquetball. Just Google, uh, just type in YouTube. Padel and you'll see a highlight video of the 10 best players in the world and that is assumed that Roddy plays very similar to those guys smashing balls out of the cage flying everywhere you know just have that image of me please I find it an incredibly fun sport it's very uh, popular in the Netherlands at the moment has been for a couple of years Lings and Banes are gonna dance with each other Obviously nerve-wracking for these guys to do a Ling Bane skirmish while playing on the American server because Europe is not kind of properly working. Seems that Rainer got a decent start to this. Loses two Lings and a Bane Ling there for a Bane of Serral. Nice target fire of the Queen of Serral to keep the Bane Ling of Rainer at bay. And that will be all for now. Who has the confidence to fire up a lair? Will we see lairs at all? Serral's building roaches. And last game he built a lot of roaches but he kept them at home. This time around, he has a Baneling Nest too. Like last game, I mentioned the Solar build, but obviously Serral didn't have a Baneling Nest. So it would have just been Lynx, Roaches, and Ravages. This time around, Serral could go pedal to the metal. And since he has 78 out of 98 supply, I actually think Serral is going to build non-stop units. But I think Rainer has a good read on this. He's going to build Spine Crawlers. Is it in time though? I said a good read, but that Roach one is still not done yet. Serro is bringing out this special that we've seen so many times be victorious in this matchup. Also against Serro. A lot of the Korean Zergs have found su uh, great success with this. Rainer is going to try to buy some time with those spines. Has plus one, ev uh, plus one missile attacks on the way. Is looking for a good Bailing connection. It's not the worst, but definitely not the best either. Does snipe one of the Bailings there. Rainer's doing a good job in buying time. Spines will finish up. Needs to be very careful with his Zerglings, and he is careful. Has one more safety spine. This is starting to look like an absolutely fantastic defense, guys. Only one bailing is remaining for Serral. Serral does still have more supply. Rainer needs to be careful. The Queen's off creep. Oh no, is that the mistake then? That's gonna do Rainer dirty? As he's trying to kill that one morphing roach into a Ravager with low on HP. Rainer needs to crank out as many units as possible. The Queen's going off creep there, guys. Was painful because Rainer was doing so good for a little while. But now in the end, I'm afraid that he's still going to end up losing the third hatchery. And he's not done yet losing units either. He's still up eight workers. Fires up the lair. Mm, Zaro is not uh, totally done yet either. He says, I believe that I can do a little bit more here with all these roaches. Does end up losing his Ravager. But if all the links manage to sneak into the natural, Reyna could still be in trouble. He doesn't have those defensive queens anymore. Can Rainer crank out a few more units? He's gonna pull the drones as well. He just needs to clean this up. Serral has droned up a little bit behind this, so it's not non-stop reinforcements. Uh, the look on Rainer's face kind of says it all. Dropping down to 50 supply. 
It seems that the opening best of three of this tournament is going to go in favor of Cero. Cero is now finding that balance between tacking up, building a few more units, building a few more drones. But he has done economic damage. He has taken out a base. He has taken out all the queens. It looked very promising for Reina for a split second when he had those spines up and he was doing a good job of keeping the queens alive. But the queens going off creep just made it so painful. Raynor immediately drops the spire. Says, all right, I'm not going to win this when it comes to roaches versus roaches. I'm way too far behind in that way. So he's going to try to surprise Sarah with some Mudas. But Mudas are expensive. And Reyna does not have a great economy. We now have a creep tumor there, by the way, connecting those bases. If Reyna would have had that earlier, I think that defense could have looked different. Lino says, I'm planning on coming to Rotterdam at the end of March, and then we need to go hardcore. If you like electronic music, we'll be going to DGTL Festival in Amsterdam. Maybe Rainer is in the Netherlands too then, mate, and we can all go. It could be kind of fun. I'm not a big festival guy. I did go to Tomorrowland one time. And I thought it was awesome, but I don't have the desire to go again. But, you know, once a year, once every couple of years, do something that you don't always do could be cool. Rainer obviously knows that he's in all sorts of trouble here and he has no answer for these extra units that Saro has built and sends to the other side of the map. GG gets called. Saro wins his opening best of three of the Masters Colosseum. We'll see more of Yona in a couple of days. We'll see more of Saro. Excuse me, we'll see more of Rainer in a couple of days as well. Rainer will play against somebody that's 0-1. So at the moment there is a chance that Rainer plays against Oliveira. There is a chance Rainer plays against Solar. Zero is 1-0, so he could potentially play Classic or he could play Dark, but obviously more matches will be played. It can be somebody that's not on this page. That means only one more best of three is left in the Masters Coliseum 7 today. Sixty-seven percent of you guys believed in the great Yona Sotala, and he made y'all proud. Cure versus Trigger, best of three. Cure, Trigger. Give you guys ten minutes for this one too. After that, uh, and then this will actually be it for me, guys. That means that this was a very short stream, only three and a half hours or something. But I had fun, played a couple other games. We're gonna do it all over again tomorrow, I believe. It's starting on the exact same time tomorrow. And I guess uh, I can do two things. I can either play more afterwards or I can play more before. Tomorrow we've got Beyond against Ragnarok, Hero against Bunny, Max Pax against Firefly, and Claymore against Maru. Yeah, every single day. Same time, same place, guys. Only on January the 17th. Oh. Okay. So we have a couple of short days, guys, but... Starting January the 17th, which actually is only four days away, that's where we're going to have the double headers. Or at least maybe best of fives. Qualifying matches, perhaps? I don't know. Because <coughs> it's still only four games. No, I am absolutely uh, covering Trigger. That's why I just set the prediction. I'm just letting you guys know that this is going to be the last best of three. And after that, I am going to do... But I've been hyping Victoria up for the entire week. And that is watch football into more football, baby. First regular football and then some American football later tonight. You wonder why Rarely does not use an ad blocker? That may have something to do with the fact that I make a living out of the internet. And I would be a bit of a hypocrite if I asked you guys to watch my ads, but then I block other people's ads. That would make me a bit of a dick. Now, in the eyes of some people, I am a dick because I make fun of them when they're rude to me, but I don't think that's totally how it works. Uh, I'll go ahead and take a tiny break, guys, and then it's uh, Trigger versus Cure, last best of three of the day. See you guys real soon. One more Bastardist player coming your way.